All right, anyway, let's go live. Ready? Live action. Do your intro that you always do for every time you're live on a video. Okay, every single time, obviously, I got... Ooh, ooh, ooh! Hey. <laughs> what is up, doggy? This is the first time we've seen each other and hung out in a long time, even though we're not even next to each other. That, that's very true. Except the for last, the time we jumped. That, that, that doesn't count. I wasn't actually there. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, so this is my your first podcast with me. I hope many more to come. Hello, Dunk Life fans. What's up, everybody? It's the man with two first names, Chris John. Three first names. Middle name is Samuel. Come on now. Shoot, you knew that. Shoot. CSJ. <laughs> Chris the Shooter Jumper. Get it? Shoot, jump shot, smooth. That nice stroke game. Anyway, um, what was I going to say to you? So where'd you get the name CJ Champion? Everyone's everyone's wondering. That's the hottest question I get every video. One person asks. Oh man, yeah, I wish I had some sort of cool story that goes along with CJ Champion. Like everybody else has a really cool story. Um, no, me, it's it's very simple. In twelfth grade, I was uh, was the videographer for my basketball team, and they won their state championship. And uh, I felt I felt like since I was a part of that system and I even got myself I got a high school ring oh, do I have it here? I do have it here Ooh. Uh, behind the scenes yeah I got the state championship ring right here and, uh, what sport? basketball? yeah basketball I didn't, I didn't make my high school team ever so <laughs> but uh, I got that and that was like that was like my life my best life accomplishment so I uh a little, I don't know, maybe a few months after, that's when I created my first Instagram, and I was thinking of names, and I was like, I felt like a champion, so Ooh. I put together, and that was it, that's it. I like it. And CJ Mixtape? Dropping that, bars? Oh, okay, no, no. <laughs> Damn. no I, don't, I don't do anything like you do with your whole, no, I can't do, <laughs> I'm not a quick thinker, but a uh, uh, mixtape would be from, uh, I used to make mixes for my, uh, for the basketball team, I would make Instagram mixes, and then I would also make uh, YouTube highlight videos. So, CJ, that's mixtape. awesome. Yeah. All right, now get on to the story that I like to hear. I've heard it once before, but I know people are curious. When was your first dunk? How did you get into it? What made you want to get your first dunk in the first place? This is this is like the best dunkers question. I like to do this when we have people coming from all over mm -hmm. to come with our Florida session. Little gatherings. Like yeah, I like to have all of us in a circle and we all one by one. Okay, what was your first dunk? Like, that's, that's the best. I love your stories. Uh, my story was pretty good. This this one's good. I like this. Um, so, I always thought growing up, um, even, even when I was younger, uh, I just remember wanting, like, I had an urge to go dunk, of course, like everyone. Uh, when I was in third, fourth grade, maybe, I had a game called NBA Street Ball Volume 2. Mm-hmm. Guys, a lot of people know about that on the PlayStation. That was that was the game, and uh, what we would do, me and my friend, we play all the time, and then uh, we'd go take it outside to the lower room, and we'd try and mimic those dunks. And that's kind of what sparked things, you know. That's kind of was that got me going. It's like, oh, this is really cool. So in high school, um, it was it was always a thing to try and jump and touch as high as you possibly can. I was I wasn't athletic at all until like end of high school, uh, but I always kept track of like you know, seeing where I was trying to, uh, what I was trying to go for. So seventh grade, I touched net for the first time. Ninth grade, I touched backboard for the first time. Uh, a little after 10th grade was rim for the first time. I think you, have, do your fans know about your story? Can we get into yours after mine? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'll talk about mine after. I just I, remember right now, I'm just now thinking back before I touched rim because I always stop at where I touched rim for the first time. But I remember, but I can't remember what age it was. I think it was, like, early... I think middle school, I was, like, slapping backboard, like, trying to... Like, I remember there was, like, one of those low backboards where it comes down a lot more under the rim. And I could yeah. do, like, layups where you slap the backboard, and I felt like a real ball player because you saw all these people do that. And I was like, that was the first time I could actually, like, reach it and do it. It was cool. That's funny. I was, I was so late on that. I never slapped backboard on layups until after. I could yeah. <laughs> Any, Anyway, yeah. Um... But uh, in high school, you know, I did play, uh, I played basketball in like certain leagues and whatnot, and I used to think that I was a decent jumper because I could touch rim at the time, and so I was always the smallest on the team, skinny, short, and just, just frail looking, and 
when people would see me jump, they would think, oh, okay, you know, you could jump. And my friends would always, like, hype me up and be like, oh, that's awesome. I'd grab a rim and they'd, they'd be excited about it. So uh, that kind of pushed me to, like, want to keep going because I thought that was, like, the one and only good thing that, or something that, like, pulled me apart from people was, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I could, you know, jump higher than most. And that's what I thought at the time. Of course, everybody could touch rim at that time, but I still thought I was special. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, there came a time where... I got to be in front of a crowd. Uh, we had a student faculty basketball game. So this is uh, this is like when when I got there, it was like a lot of students were there. All my friends were there. The basketball team was there. Uh, all the coaches were on the other side too. So this was like kind of like my moment to finally shine after just being in the backlight, being a videographer for the whole entire year. But uh, I haven't gotten to like ever like show off or do something interesting in front of a big crowd, which usually excites me. So uh, this was in my mind. I wanted to dunk at this point. Um, I was but you never my... even have you really attempted before? I, you know, I was tempted. I was attempting a lot this year. I, uh, I would always, whenever I played ball, I'd have somebody throw it up for me, and I'd have to try and go dunk it. And mm-hmm. I would attempt it. I did attempt it a million times. And then I remember, I want to say I was touching like right here, uh, and that was that was like a week or two weeks before I was uh, I got my first dunk. So. So, faculty game, right, it's starting, I got, like, the jitters, I'm all excited, everybody's watching, we're in warm-ups, and I'm like, oh, this is crazy. I, I told I told Daniel Lowe, he was playing with us, he was on the team, uh, I told the Daniel Lowe. 6'9 guy we've dunked with, a million, the white guy looks like a 2K player when he dunks, that's Daniel Lowe for you guys watching. That's 6'8", too. So oh, like, yeah, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I remember beforehand, I was like, Daniel, you gotta throw me a lob in warm-ups, that would be amazing. He's like, all right, I got you. He never did. I couldn't. I tried to get his attention, and I was like, all right, you know what? Just screw it. I've never tried to do it off the dribble, but I just thought, I don't mind. Let's just go for it. I went and tried it, and then like I banged it first try. <laughs> I I, yeah, it. and I, if if do you have that uploaded anywhere? Yeah, that's that's on my yeah. Instagram. Yeah, if you go watch that first dunk, I'm sure it's labeled first dunk. It's like one of the cleanest first dunks you could ever have. It does not look like it's someone's first made dunk. It looks like someone who's been practicing that like over and over. It's like cleaner than my best 10-foot dunk yet still, and it's his first dunk. Just natural. It's crazy. Uh, I, uh, I just remember I landed, and I just like looked away from everything. I, I didn't even look at anybody. I looked away. You ran out the gym? No, I just, I just, walk, I kind of like walked away for a second. I was like, that, that, that just happened. And I turned yeah. and I looked at everybody, and everybody's like freaking out on the, on the, uh, everybody in the stands mm-hmm. and all the teammates, all my teammates are like, that just, that just happened. And then, oh, it was good. It was good. That, so <laughs> I crazy. felt like I was the king of the world at that point. I felt like I was going to go into school the next Monday and then everybody was going to be talking to me <laughs> because of the one that dunked. Or I was, I felt like I was Mr. Popular or whatever. That's crazy. Uh, but, nah, <laughs> that was that was so much fun, and uh, I, I even remember coming home because my family was like my family. I had family that was from out of town, and they just happened to be uh, at the house, so they came they came and watched. Uh, so I, I went home like super excited, and I couldn't wait to tell everybody about how that dunk felt. And they were all <laughs> they were all like, "Oh yeah, that yeah, was cool, it was good for you." You know, <laughs> it was like, "All right, move on now." <laughs> That's so crazy. So basically, yeah. you. You just always wanted to dunk just when you were a little kid. I think most guys like to dunk, but I don't think they ever think it's possible. I think that's part of the reasons not too many people go for because it, it was – when we were, when I was younger at least, it was more like a, a, a thing that was only done by like elite people and NBA players. You never really saw average kids dunking. There was like one out of like so many at the gym that would – it was just like a dream type activity exactly. for people. Yeah. I feel like I haven't even been, like, I haven't been around basketball enough. Like, I mean, of course I played all my life, but, like, I haven't been around high-level competition until, until after high school and then I joined Hoop Brothers. But um, I didn't even, like, I saw dunking as, like, even if I saw, like, some six foot eight dude dunking, I would still be incredibly amazed because I, nev- I, I never got to see it that often. So right. I did it. I felt pretty special that's what's cool about now and all it's kind of it's cool i definitely like it more than i don't like it but it also takes away from the shock factors that a lot a lot of times now at like gyms you see a lot more people dunking than you did in the past because before in the past it was like nobody could and if somebody could it was like a a shock so it's still fun to go to new gyms where they don't really know about it like the whole dunk life not to shout myself out 
but they don't really know they don't know about the whole like movement going on so like they're still shocked by like some random person that could dunk because usually it's just elite like talented people yeah yeah i feel that <laughs> that's cool um okay. oh yeah so the other thing what were you gonna say are we getting to you like yeah what, we can how- say mine mine was um so, like I said, I slapped the backboard. I always jumped. I remember always jumping as a kid. I always liked low rims. Whenever there was, like, a low rim possibility, we would go crazy. So, one was, like, this... My friend had, like, a little full court, and we would play, like, just, like, two-on-two, like, dunk games. It was so fun. Like, actual playing, but just dunking all the time, and that was, like, my favorite. And then we would always buy, like, little hoops and just try to dunk on each other. Then... um we would have, like, little dunk contests on low hoops, and it was just always fun to try to, like, dunk on low hoops. What was the other thing I was going to say? So I would always just try different dunks. Then I got a, a hoop on my trampoline, and that was so much fun because you could, like, jump and feel like you're jumping high and dunk it. Like, you need to jump high to dunk it. So that, I did a lot of trampoline dunking. But even before dunking, I would always try to touch things. Like, I remember being in, like, elementary school trying to touch, like, the doorway. Like, the <laughs> just trying to touch everything. Always trying to, always trying to touch off vert. I was running. I was doing a running jump through the hallways. <laughs> but yeah, always trying to touch something. I always loved like jumping high to catch a ball. Like I was playing football or something. I always just loved jumping. And then when I was in high school, I never thought dunking was possible. I always thought like it was like I could do like low rims and things like that. But then in high school, my I was on the JV team. I didn't play. I was riding the bench. But like my teammates, they were more athletic and a little taller. They were like trying to dunk in practice and sometimes they would get it. So, like, everybody else would try, too, and just try to touch the rim. And then, like, that was when I, like, got pretty close to touching rim. And I'm like, wait, what if I could just touch the rim? That would be really cool because I was, like, really short on the team. I was, like, one of the shortest guys. I'm like, if I could touch the rim and other people can't touch the rim, that's already, like, really good hops. Tried that, and I touched the rim. And then from then, it was off one foot, just running. And then after that, that's when I was, like... Man, my first goal ever was just to hang on the rim. I thought that would be the coolest thing in the world, just to be able to hang on the rim, just to say that I could hang on a rim that like NBA players play on and dunk on. I could hang on the same rim. It's just crazy because a lot of people can't even like come close to touching it. So I did that. Then I hung on it. And then I was working out like with different programs and stuff, but I didn't like them because a, a lot of times just the jumping was what helped me get to the hanging on the rim. I didn't use any programs to go from touching to hanging. And then I just... I, like, I didn't realize at the time, but the LA Fitness room was low, so in about like three or four months, I went from hanging and I got like a little basic one foot dunk, and that was my first one, and that one felt really unreal. And then I started bounce dunks, and those came quick just because I got the toss right and things like that, but then it took a while to get where I am now, a lot of oh. injuries and things. Huh? I was like 19. You were 19 for I, the one foot? For the one foot dunk, I was in college. It was my freshman year in college, so I was like... 19 and I remember like I couldn't believe it because uh, the other thing was this I started the yeah I was like 18 when I started and I remember telling people I just started touching the rim oh yeah and then I watched YouTube videos and I uh I saw that people like made progress they went from like just touching the rim like Andy Nicholson is one over the hill dunker he went from like where I was which was like barely touching grabbing the rim to dunking in like 12 weeks, it was like a program. So I'm like, oh, there's programs out there designed for this. So I was telling all my friends I'm going to dunk in three months and making jokes because I really thought I would because I thought if I went hard, I would do it because I was already hanging on the rim. But then it just took a lot longer than I thought and it was a lot. It took a lot longer to get uh, higher and things like that. But yeah, then I just remember like when I, I was training and like nobody understood too, which is the funny part because I would go to the gym and I filmed everything. So I would film myself just trying to hang with two hands. I could never even hang with two hands. So I caught that on tape. And then I did it for the first time on a real hoop because that was the first time I was on a low hoop. And it was just weird like having people film. I would have random people film me at the gym because I wanted to document it because I knew. I, had a, I didn't know, but I was very confident I would dunk eventually. So I wanted the footage of when I couldn't and got my first like rim hangs and things. But uh, one second. Sorry. All right, we're back. <clears throat> Where was I? Oh, so I would film everything at the gym and then people wouldn't understand what I was doing because I was just kind of documenting where I was as well as training. So my jumping sessions were were just jumping sessions back then. So I would just jump at the rim over and over again and like because I knew that would help me increase because I was like trying my hardest and I knew I went from touching to hanging with one hand. So I knew if I just went to try to hang with two hands, I could. So it was just really weird. I had to film everything. I was trying to dunk like a little ball. 
and just a lot and like sprinting in the gym and just crazy line hops and filming everything. So it was really it was really strange because I was like showing my friends the videos like how close I was. Nobody but it, it yeah, but it was like months of it. And I was telling them like, I'm gonna dunk, I'm gonna dunk. They're like, and then when I finally got close, they're like, oh wow, because like I was the shortest out of all my friends too, all my friends that played basketball. So I would tell them I'm gonna dunk in a few weeks, and I was training and like. It just it was like surreal when I had a dunk on tape to be able to just show people that I got one, and it was really crazy because I was like, I I didn't believe it for a while. I would just watch it over and over again. Like I just I, did it like once. I think that that must feel way better than like people who are just doing it naturally for the first time because you actually like worked for it. You knew what you had to do and mm-hmm. you worked for it. You tracked it. Eventually. The best the best was people that like they weren't even like hating they just honestly didn't think it was possible because it was such like a dream thing back then they weren't saying like you can't do it because like I wasn't even close when I started I was just like touching rim and so were a lot of people but they were like you can't get up over the rim and do it and it was just like it, it just made it so much better to do it and now I can still barely dunk so six years later I'm almost there <laughs> huh you're lying yeah, I'm doing, I finally did really good last week, actually, so I'm happy about that. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you about a lot via games, ghetto games. Oh, why? Okay. Because we never really got to talk about what that experience was like, and do you consider yourself a pro dunker now, traveling the world, or what? Absolutely pro dunker, yes. Oh! yes. <laughs> That's so crazy. Uh, Riga, okay, so Riga was my first time in, in Europe, um, let me let me pause you right there. So before you got to this level and you got your first dunk, were you thinking that you wanted to just get as good as you can or did you think you wanted to compete or what were you thinking after you got your first dunk? Did you just want to get better because it was fun? Because for me, it was just for fun just to get as best and it still is. But now I would love to like compete too. But do you, what was your mindset? Uh, well, I also had the thought of when I first dunked, I didn't think I would ever be able to dunk to be honest. Um, that was my mindset, and I never really tried to push to... I mean, yeah, of course I would do it for fun, yeah. It was mainly for fun, but once I realized that, uh, you know, I was increasing really quickly, then there was a point where it was like, okay, maybe maybe I could get real good at this. And I, I still obviously kept doing it for fun, but no way did I even think... After my first dunk, I didn't even think I'd ever be able to windmill. I oh never knew that God. was going to happen. I didn't think I'd be able to do like any of this stuff. Uh, I, you know, it was it was just one step at a time. For every, and that's how it is for everyone. It's like okay, one hander, the next is like two hander. It's Not crazy. For- it's cr- yeah. <laughs> I'm almost there. It's crazy <laughs> that um, like the way you uh, the way you dunk now is like how you used to see like elite people like NBA players. That's all we used to watch as NBA players before like YouTube and things like that. So like it's weird. I know it is for you because I can do like a few of them, not all the same dunks, but like to say that you can do the same dunks that like those people used to like watch and like and env- not envy, but just be amazed by is like you're doing the same thing. It's just a really crazy feeling. It's yeah, okay. I've never thought about it that way, but uh that's uh yeah. yeah. I was, <laughs> like I'm I'm doing things that the professional dunkers are doing now. Yeah. So, that's, uh, I don't know, it hasn't hit me yet. I'm just doing it. <laughs> All right, let's get back to Latvia because you did a crazy dunk I want to talk about. So anyway, first overseas or Europe trip? That was, uh, first of all, the flights, man. I had like four different connecting flights to get there, but yeah. Jeez. You become a professional dunker, you got to get used to all this flying. But uh, first time being there was, I get out the plane and I remember they already had cameras on me as soon as I get out. They're greeting me with cameras and we're taking pictures already. But, uh, yeah, getting there was cool. You look around, they're driving you to the hotel, and you're just seeing everything is just different. Uh, the area that they were in, was it was just different. Everything is, it just feels different. Everybody's speaking a different language. Everybody looks a little different. Uh, and me, with this skin color, I stood out. Because, <laughs> like, they're looking at me. Like oh he's here for something yeah <laughs> um oh it was it was so cool and then uh, just being there oh even better just being there with everybody else too like uh, I met up with Peel Trek and Jordan Kilgannon first on the first day uh, and we we went out to one of the ghetto events so this area apparently uh, with ghetto games it was it was like I guess the ghetto 
before. I don't know how many years ago, but it was a really bad rundown area with a lot of crime and whatnot. And what these guys are doing, uh, the ghetto community, they're trying to turn it into something uh, more positive. So they hold these a bunch of events throughout the year, and it's it's free. I think they're all free, too. So people just show up, and they have a good time, and it's just a big party. And it's all the influence, uh, you know, having a better area. So hmm. it's, it's, it's really cool. That's crazy. So what was it like when you, like, was it just one day, like, one of the days was the dunk contest, and it was just, like... You just had to yeah. arrive there and just get started? I uh, I got there, I think. I got there, and then we had one day of rest, and then the next day was the contest, if I remember correctly. But uh, I just I remember getting there, and uh, we would hang out. All the dunkers would hang out. They had this place called the Ghetto Burger, and uh, we would all you know eat there and, and just chill, basically. I remember I... I I stayed in uh, Kilgannon's uh, hotel room a lot. And I, we watched anime together. <laughs> uh, and the next day, we went and checked out the venue. They didn't even, like, finish building it. What they had to do was they, they moved it to uh, the market. And it's apparently, like, the biggest central market in Europe or something. Uh, so we were in this sort of hangar area where they kept... Uh, it was it was an old hangar area that, that used to... Like, they were telling us that they would carry... Uh, it would hold these big, what are they called? Uh, big, like, war b- balloon thingies. I don't remember what they're called, but it was for, like, World War II. Anyway, we were in there. They, there was nothing. It was just completely empty. And then they just, they were, like, getting, they were getting all this stuff ready to work. So they were working, like, literally all day and all night. And the next day when we showed up, and when it was contest time, we showed up in the morning and everything was already set up. And, like, seeing, just looking, like, at how everything was looking, it was, I was getting, like, really, 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 really excited. Uh, and then everybody else was getting excited, too. If you ever seen Sutherland in person, Jordan Sutherland, he's just crazy. <laughs> he, him and Guy Dupuy, they basically had a dunk session before, like, in the morning, before our uh, contest, which was at night, which was just stupid. I don't know how you could do that. Yeah. Hurting, but they, they did it, and uh, it was cool. <laughs> it was really cool. Um and then uh, come contest time, come contest time, it was, uh, I remember uh, I was in the back somewhere and people started coming in and I didn't come out till like later and I saw everybody, I saw the entire crowd, there were so many people and that's that's when I was like, I was like, okay, it's, it's go time. Because <laughs> my heart was just going. And you had, when what was your like uh, setup for like what dunks you were going to do? Because I know you had the ninja dunk, the whatever you want to call it. The yeah. one in the po- back pocket you didn't unveil to anybody yet. Yeah, the con- the contest was tough. First of all, because when dunks started happening, it was I had my plan right, and then very quickly everybody took all the dunks that I wanted to do. They already did it, so my plan was really was really messed up. Um, but obviously, I wanted to come out with a bang, so I've been practicing the windmill. Okay, let, I'm gonna call it a. a Cradle Scorpion for now. Okay. The cradle scorpion. It's the one where you went like, and you don't look, and you do that whole mess. Yeah, nobody nobody knew that I was doing that. Uh, I, I told you, I told Isaiah, that was about it. And I was practicing that for like a month or a month and a half prior to the event, and I just I got it down pat. So I wanted to start with that. That was that was supposed to be the banger. I gotta you know start with something nice and be like, all right, guys, what's up? I'm here. <laughs> what's up? Yeah. So, so you definitely it, did that. I, uh, yeah, I killed that. I killed it too. First try. The picture, went, like the the video of it and the picture of it, is just unreal. It looks so like you're like looking down but backwards and sideways, and you're going against your own spin. It's crazy. I love that dunk. That's uh, so yeah, nuts. Yeah. The feeling after hitting that one was the best. I felt uh, the most confident and cocky. Which one was felt. better, that one or your very first dunk? <laughs> close one right it's crazy because one is so like no one cares about the first one everybody's like no one gives it at all they don't even give two thoughts about it and now this one's in a huge crowd uh first like european contest and get it first try on a brand new dunk no one's ever done (laughs) and it's a tough decision i think i think i'm gonna have to give it to the cups, uh, the cradle scorpion, because of uh, I don't know, it's got too much behind it. There's yeah. too much like, behind it. Yeah, so. I would say so. Oh no, I don't know. They're both First milestones time. and they're very different. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, I had I did have my plan. Everything everything got taken. So when it came down to my second dunk, 
in total, if I were to keep moving on in the in the uh, in the contest, I think I would have needed like six total dunks. So I had to I had to save my good dunks for later. So come around to my second dunk, everybody did everything, and I was like, I thought I don't know what I'm gonna pull out. I'm not sure because I didn't want to pull out one of my better dunks uh, so early on. So I I was thinking to myself, okay, the 360 cradle that was not that was not that's the ninja one. The ninja. <laughs> it's it's now now Jordan made me come up with a name for it, so it's now called the crisscross. Spelled Ooh, C- I love that. That's cross, really yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah. So okay, I have my own dunk name now too. That's Crazy. Unreal. Anyway, uh, I wasn't thinking of doing it, and um, I thought, okay, you know what? Let's pull it out. And I also thought uh, I need to do something extra with it. I need to do something else. What if I jumped over somebody? Somebody even, I think Guy, Guy came up to me, he was like, yo, you should do this. And I was thinking about it. I was already thinking about it. I was like, all right, I think, I think I'm going to have to try it. So I was also thinking I'm going to have to do it over somebody. Now, this was originally planned when I would practice my, uh, my Riga dunks. I already practiced trying to do the uh, crisscross over somebody bent over, mm-hmm. and it didn't go well. It did not go well at all. I had troubles with it, and I gave up on it. So I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I thought let's just let's just go for it. So I winged it at somebody. I put uh, uh, I put uh, oh what's his Getty Mus. Uh, I'm probably saying it wrong, but I put him out there. Uh, and the first time I got it, my second try. The first time I I cleared him, and I completely like I was it was a bad miss. So I thought to myself, all right, this is not going good, <laughs> but I'm up in it, so I got to keep going. Yeah. So then uh, I went for it again, and I didn't punch it, but it went in, it squeaked in, I landed it, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I was just like, all right, okay, I did it, that was cool. <laughs> Let's move on, let's think about what I'm doing next. But uh, what, it, what ended up happening was my score, my two scores uh, for those first two dunks were too low. Uh, so I tied with Miller and Piotrek to move on to the second round. So we had to do like an elimination dunk. All three of us had to do an elimination dunk. And I went with something easy that nobody hasn't done in the contest yet. And it didn't, I don't think it got, it didn't do that well. Miller, what did Miller do? What was it? But Miller, Miller moved on. What was your dunk? I did the, uh, the double up X down the middle where I got, I got one mega push off. I think the rim was like yeah. great. Um, originally I wanted to do that over a motorcycle. I had that plan for the next round. I was going to do that over a motorcycle. You brought your motorcycle? They had a motorcycle there. <laughs> they had a motorcycle and a car set up. But yeah, you know what? Maybe next time I'll bring my own motorcycle. Dude, cars are crazy. No, Chris Staples is crazy. I don't know how you'd be jumping over cars off the dribble like that. That's 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 uh, flight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, and then yeah, Miller moved on. So I had three dunks in total from the contest, and that was that. It was really fun to be honest once it was over once once my three dunks were over i like just chilled out and i was like okay i'm gonna sit back i'm gonna enjoy watching everybody else yeah for me. real take it all in yeah and i was just like looking at the crowd i was trying to get engaged with the crowd and oh uh, even the end once uh staples won and there was confetti everywhere and uh, when it was time to leave i probably took like a hundred pictures and i don't know how many autographs i signed <laughs> that was that what? Uh, it, it, celebrity that was that was kind of crazy what <laughs> That's wild. Dude, when does Dunk League come out? Oh, around October. Is it maybe end of October? Uh, I do uh, not know what I'm allowed to say, but I can say Dunk, Dunk League is, is better than Dunk King. So yeah, Dunk it, League, I don't want to say anything either, but you did very well in Dunk League, and I'm so excited to see. I don't even know what you did. I just know you did well. That's it. I just know. Anyway, this is another question, a random question I wanted to ask you. Do you like, what do you like about dunking the most? Do you like the style, power, straight, vertical, or a combo of all? Because, I mean, you kind of need them all to make everything right, but some people have a little more favoritism to one area. I feel like it depends on how I'm feeling. Because there's, there was, I have, I have phases. Those angry <laughs> sessions, and you're like, why is he angry? I, that was a long one, long ago we had one of those where I kept saying, you were going nuts. I was like, what's uh, so, yeah. why is he so angry? Just yeah, banging just, everything. Give me, give me some girl problems, and I'll just, yeah. I'll just break for him. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I see. I, I agree. It depends on the mood. But well, what else was I going to say? When you dunk for your style, because a lot of people say, how do you get style on your dunks? Do you try to get style? Or a lot of times you just kind of dunk, try to dunk it hard, try to just go as hard as you can and just let the style come naturally? Uh, the style comes natural to me, and I'm lucky for that. I'm, uh, that that's kind of what makes me unique. That's why people like my dunks. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to do anything extra. It's just the legs do what they want while I'm mm-hmm. in the air. I think that's the best way to do it is just go hard and then your style will come through if you dunk it good. Dunk it well. Yeah. Dunk it well. My style <laughs> actually early on, I don't think my my style wasn't good at all, I don't think. I can I can I can remember when I first started doing lob dunks, that's when it sort of started to come. So it took it took it took a little bit of time, but then it just kinda of eventually came. Um, and then once I started noticing it and kind of like, you know, saying, you know, oh they like this about it and it's like, okay, well then you know, I'll make sure I try and keep it up. I still don't try it, but right. you know, things that, you know, certain dunks or angles that make it look good. But anyway. Definitely. Do you, um, when you have dunk sessions now, are you trying to work on your bounce or are you just trying to work on certain dunks for contests? Uh, recently, it's just been contests because I have contests after contests now. Or I feel like I just need to be ready for a contest at all times because they're yeah. just coming in. Because you're a pro so, dunker now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you uh, do you practice like one or like a like a set number of dunks? Or you just try a bunch of dunks like and practice those over and over again, like land as many as you can and practice each one, or do you like each session you focus on a few? So it really all depends. Like for example, today I'm still knocking the rest off, so it was like a normal session where I tried a bunch of dan- like random different dunks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when I get into it, when I feel like good, then yeah, I'll have a set list of dunks, and it'll be my contest dunks, and I'll just you know try and rep them up. Maybe hopefully get it like three times right. each dunk three times. That would be nice. Sometimes I, you know I throw in a little extra dunk or whatever. That way, I could you know post something on Instagram. I don't usually like posting uh, my contest dunks. That right. Contest. So. Yeah. So do you? Um, what was I about to say? Oh, what was your biggest obstacle you think so far in your whole dunk journey? Like biggest mm-hmm. thing you had to overcome? Always just injuries. That's the yeah. worst. You have to keep your body healthy. So uh, I've the only I haven't had horrible injuries before but everybody goes through knee pain everybody goes through something for me uh i used to i get like little bits of knee pain i've learned how to overcome that yeah you know so while you're talking about knee pain real quick you know the guy ori i think his name's ori biala i think you say his name something like that he's the guy who created the page jumping is better than chocolate (laughs) <laughs> you never heard of him? Anyway, I've been talking to him a lot, and he seems to know a lot about that, so I might, I'm going to have him on soon. So we're going to talk a lot about knee pain. and like, Because I constantly have knee pain, but it doesn't really hold me back, but I would love to get it at 100 so it doesn't get worse, and I could prolong my career. But yeah, that would be really interesting. I'm really interested to see what he has to say. And like, there's so many ways to diagnose that he was like having me do little movements and things like that, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that sounds that would be really good. You know who else you should get on here? Um, Project Vertical. What's his yes, name? Yes, I'm, I'm going to talk to him as well. That's Tyler Ray. Tyler Ray, yeah. Jukebox, Tyler. better known yeah. as Jukebox. Yeah, he's a genius. I know, I miss his dunks. Please, please do a podcast where it's just a stretch session. Oh, wait, no, that's not a podcast. No. I'll do a video. We'll do a stretch session together. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll do one, too, where I just get a massage. I'll just film myself getting a massage for an hour. <laughs> Post it. Um, oh, what's oh. your vertical at right now? Oh, jeez. Standing okay. vert. Standing vert? <laughs> the worst. I can't dunk uh, standing. Uh, I don't yeah, think you I've, can. I've never done a 10-foot dunk standing vert. I think you can. I think you should do it. I was I was close during oh you know what I can't say never mind but uh, did uh, uh, give I, away can't give away nothing no no <laughs> um so what do you think your max vert was your highest jump I think it was like solid fifty because your head was above the rim not at it it was above it like significantly. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 49. Okay. <laughs> and you, Fair. You, I, you know, That's you're so about, crazy. You talking about the one at? Uh, it was during a Golden Bear session. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> there too. That would be the highest jump. So, so I would say 49. 40, 
Yeah. Um, so would you say that when you jump and do a height check, when you, like, do that little extra neck extension, does that, like, boost your whole body? Like, it's kind of like a momentum thing. You sling your neck up and it it pulls it's the rest of you. That, is that what you do? <laughs> it's, a, it's a double jump, basically. <laughs> I'm uh, going to try I'm, that. I do it. I just try and stay straight. But the whole neck thing, sometimes I emphasize it, sometimes <laughs> I mean, not you, I'm just saying a lot of people like they do that, it looks like they're, <laughs> for people that aren't watching this video, they're like, they can't see me doing the neck thing, but yeah, I don't know, that height check is crazy, more serious question though, when are we dunking next, soon uh, right, maybe Tuesday, if the hurricane doesn't rip down all the LA fitnesses, yeah, yeah, after this hurricane, so let's go Tuesday, but do you think the hurricane in any way will help our spin dunks to do like 540s? <laughs> You know, it's going to be extra windy outside on Tuesday. We should test it out. Outdoor session. <laughs> Outdoor spin sessions. For sure. We should just talk to the hurricane. You want to you wanna come over? When? Uh, during the eye of the storm. Yeah, anybody... my, well, yeah, my building's like closed, so I'd have to get out before. Oh, did I tell you that? I'll tell you that later. We're going to talk about that. Um, right. What was I going to say? Oh, what are your thoughts on... Lifting and plyometric sessions besides like dunk sessions. Beautiful. If if um if you're already like at the point where all you did was jump a lot and like you don't see your vertical increasing anymore from just jumping, your next step is to basically lift and plyometric. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a mixture of those like fits really well or works really well. It also depends on your body, but. For me, uh, I'm more, I'm more of a yeah. You, I do want to get my legs stronger, but I tend to do better when I'm kind of like flatlining. Like I'm not like going hard when it comes to lifting, uh, but I'm doing a mixture of focusing on lifting and making sure I'm also like running and jumping or, or doing plyos. Okay, so. I have a theory on that. So I want you, to, I want your thoughts on that. So because right. I started lifting too, like a few months ago. But even back when I started, lifting was thought of me – I thought of it like this too. Is like, yes, I lift and I get stronger, but those are also days that I used to be jumping. So instead of jumping now, I'm taking a longer break from jumping. So I don't know if the lifting's helping me jump better or it's the fact that I'm taking more of a break from jumping and just kind of like getting a small workout. And I don't know if it's actually the lifting because if I would have done something else like yoga that day or just something productive – I would have jumped as, as like kept increasing my jumping as well. So that's just a weird theory I had because I know I do well. I needed rest. I definitely overtrained a lot and jumped too much. And lifting was like a supplemental exercise. But I felt if I did any supplemental exercise that wasn't jumping, it would have helped just as much. But it's hard to say because the strength is definitely good. But I don't know. It's still in the back of my mind that possibly it was just because I was not jumping. <laughs> it is hard to say. And I'm going to say... Maybe it would help by like fifteen yeah. percent, which is a which is a lot. But also down the road too, if you're strengthening your legs, I think uh, it's kind of like putting a cushion on your tendons too. Yeah, that's so what it's like. safer for your body if if you're doing that mixture. But but honestly, when you do jump and rest, like get good rest and then jump again, yeah, that's that that would be optimal. But yeah. I feel I feel. Um, like for example, I was I would have a lifting, you know, I'd be in the lifting grind, lifting, jumping, lifting, jumping, lifting, jumping, and then uh, I remember I had like three events, you know, back to back to back, three or four events. So I completely stopped lifting. I haven't lifted for like four weeks, and uh, my body did feel great. And then I jumped my highest ever, and yeah, when I had the sessions, like when Jordan Kilgan came down, when I came back from Chicago. That was like after. That was just me jumping, get a really good rest, and then jump again, get a really good rest, and then jump again. That's the best my body's ever felt. And I don't know if that was from the lifting a month ago, or if I don't know if it was from jumping and then waiting or jumping. Right. Waiting or it's it's hard sense. to tell. But as I've lifted more, that's really that's a really good point. But as I've lifted more, I've come to I feel like it's I'm going against my own theory of that it was just taking off from jumping only because. 
I didn't like lifting earlier because every time I lifted, I got I gained a lot of weight because I just wasn't jumping enough. But now I kind of got the right amount down. So now I feel like I'm getting stronger, but not really getting any bigger or heavier. So that's I feel like that can only be beneficial. And like you said, it prevents injuries and keeps me like healthy and like absorbing the impact. But like the reason I thought of that theory in the first place is when I used to jump a lot. My legs felt like stronger and stronger. Like I would jump so much that I would get sore that I felt like those jumping, like I wasn't running and like long endurance. I was just jumping so hard so many times. I felt like I was getting stronger. My legs were like growing. I could like feel my pants like getting tighter just from jumping because they were growing. So I was like, I'm definitely building strength with the amount of jumping I'm doing. So I'm like, I don't know if I need to lift to get stronger, but know, everyone's different. No, not everybody has horse legs like mine that are abnormal. So you probably <laughs> lifting is definitely helpful. I like lifting though; it makes me feel like it's like a more direct uh, way to feel like I increase. Like if I hit a new number, I'm like I'm stronger now. Like it's not like jumping where it's like I hope I jump higher next time because I jumped a lot. I get a big sense of accomplishment too, and I always yeah. feel like I added something to my explosiveness whenever I do right. that. I, I want to do more field work, too, because when I went to the beach last weekend, it felt so good. And I swear, the next dunk session I had, I felt quick, like, more explosive, like, just, like, off a drop step, just felt like I could fly. And I was, like, dunking two hands on that low rim off, like, a slow approach. I'm, like, I feel like this explosion and the change of direction, like, made my, like, footwork so much better and just, like, quicker. More poppy seed. We'll get that going. We do need to... I've been... I've been thinking... I've been uh, uh, thinking of like other things we could do for field day too. But, well, uh, playing catch with the football would be so fun because I love catching, and then you like you throw a bad pass or like a high pass, you have to jump off like one leg and reach. Just I love that. I feel like that's so good. I uh, I do it I do it a different way. I'm not very good at throwing or catching footballs, so I use a frisbee, which is ooh ultimate. Yeah, ultimate frisbee is fun. It is fun. <laughs> um, also- it would be fun if you jump super high. Oh my god, I'd love that. That's what I do. <laughs> you know what I'm obsessed with now is those the backflip people that catch footballs and do backflips oh. midair. Dude, I need to do that. I'm do I'm going to do it eventually. I don't care how long it takes me not to actually do the thing. I'll just have to get over the fear of a backflip. Right. Cuz 8-year-old girls with a 4-inch vertical could do a backflip. I'm pretty sure I with 10 times the vertical I can do it. It's all technique. Yeah, it's, it's just all. fear. I'm just scared of it. I used to do it on the trampoline all the time. Yeah, but then that's also different. But. Yeah, stop it. Um, now, game dunks. Where are you on game dunks? Uh, you, you, you've had some vicious ones that are off camera that I love. So do you get as hype for those or more like a new dunk? That, oh, new dunk new dunk is probably better. But, but I do like having in-game dunks because you know what? I honestly don't play enough. Uh, so when I get them, I can think about that in-game dunk for like three days. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but a new dunk would be different. Mm, I, I don't know. You think about it. I think about it. If I ever filmed me playing basketball and I actually had footage of my in-game dunks, I don't know what I would watch more. Come to think of it, if you dunk- postered someone, especially if it was some kid that got annoyed when you were dunking in between games. Okay, that would be the best. <laughs> That's my I, dream. I, don't, I haven't really been able to post to a lot of people that I don't have like a giant body count uh if I I do have one that's sort of on camera uh I was in New Orleans and there was uh it was during like NBA All-Star have I seen this uh I don't think anybody's seen it because oh Jordan God. Jordan Killian and he filmed it and it was during me and Isaiah had a uh we were doing some charity event and uh we played in the game and we did a dunk show for halftime and I did dunk on somebody in that game, and like somebody was like perfectly in front of the camera. Uh, it wasn't that vicious though, but like that was the last time I remember dunking on somebody, and it was it was a good reaction because there was like a decent crowd, man. so that was that was fun. And yeah, I, I need to go find that footage again. I haven't seen it. In we a need while, to play. But, we need to get some game dunks. I do. I actually played today. I thought about it thought about it i thought about jumping with people but i just don't want to get hurt yeah me either um what are your goals right now like do you have a vertical goal or are you just more of a dunk goal like what dunks to land oh, I, I i have a dunk goal right now i just have i need to get some more uh contest dunks ready i am going to mexico october 1st i've literally just finished some paperwork That's right so 
I am um, gonna do the FIBA three by three. I'm going against Arrow and Chris Staples, and I don't know who Ooh. else. That's These. crazy. But you're yeah. not gonna tell us your lineup of dunks. You're gonna pull out the Chris Cross two point oh or something. <laughs> Chris Cross two point oh. I mean, yeah, that might that might show up, but there's gonna be more of a twist, you know. <laughs> Dude, you should pull out a new dunk called the Criss Cross Applesauce. Criss Cross Applesauce. So now Dude. I'm gonna my legs. Well, yeah, you have to do something with your legs. You're gonna have to go like fold them like that in the air. <laughs> Dude, fold your arms like this and your leg. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen. That's Dude, that point. would be a sick dunk. <laughs> that would look stupid. <laughs> that would look crazy. Hmm. What else is new? What else? What else we got? I just want to say, how about Dexton? Yeah. How about, how about Dexton all over Bleacher Report and all of his videos are literally just viral? <laughs> Dude, he's got the system, Dude, he's got us. He's got us. All our eyes watched, locked on him. He's figured it out, and his his content is beautiful. <laughs> I love the full speed motion ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. they don't look real. <laughs> like the slow mo, they do, but like you have a lot of time to process them. But the fast motion is like both of them. What? <laughs> I like both. Yeah, he's nuts. I want to see him run like a uh, uh, forty yard. I want to see what he would get. We should all race one day. I- that's a great idea. I don't want to race because I'm like a duck, so I don't want to race against humans as a duck. But I'll st- I'll go for it. That's the other thing about field work is I feel like sprints are so good. Like I want to feel athletic again because I used to feel athletic. Speaking of ducks, <laughs> Scotty's approach. How do you think he looks when he sprints? Scotty looks funny, but his takeoff looks really good. So that's all that matters. Just cut out the f- first few steps that don't matter. The little waddle, the little waddle. It's right, like, he's like a little duck waddle, but I'm like a squirrel. Like, I take 400 steps and <laughs> sprint and then take off as hard as I can. <laughs> That's quite accurate. That's yeah, quite accurate. but I'm fixing that up, too, because I look at people like you that kind of, like, have a slower approach. Not slow, but, like, more controlled. And I need that. Maybe you just need longer legs and then that, that would happen. Dude, I'm excited for the... Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for this uh, NBA season because I feel like dunking has become much more of a oh, yeah. movement, and there's so many more dunkers that like came out of high school, and so many in the NBA now that like like Aaron Gordon, for example. If you watched his last year's like highlights, he had like so many trick dunks in game, and he got everyone. Whoa! Whenever he got like a fast break, he would like pump it. It was so nice. Yeah, so I'm excited uh, to see like crazy people take off on people. And um, I know last uh, the dunk contest was whack. But I'm still also excited to see how it can, like, how it's going to do this time. It was still good. Like, they still had better dunks, at least. Yeah. Zach yeah, Levine yeah. brought it back. And Aaron Gordon, too. Like, they both brought it back. That was so big. That was so cool. Yeah, that would be interesting. But, I mean, everybody's also looking at uh, the Ball family now, seeing how, how he'll the drop, He dropped a rap today. Yeah, that I saw on Instagram. I didn't hear it yet. It's so that, basic. Was it really? It was just, like... Just stupid. Ah, what do you I'm expect? hating on it. What do you just, expect? It was just like I don't know. It was just like I don't know. It was just like what, what exactly would you'd expect? Like, what do you expect him to say right now? What do you, if you say like if you if I gave you ten slots to write down what you think he'd say in the song, talk about you'd be ten for ten. Never even heard it. Yeah, Basketball, dude. we're balling. We got the triple Bs. We got the. <laughs> We got the freaking my my brother's too young to ball, but he balling out like everything, just ridiculous. Yeah. He's in a Lamborghini and he's twelve. Like it's the same. Thing. It's like it's like okay, yes, I know. It, just, it wasn't even good. I don't know. It was just like it was just dumb. That's funny. But it is it is interesting to see them like build their own brand. I'm more I'm more impressed by that. How like everything yeah. is just becoming like marketing. It's crazy. Yeah. I want to see how they do. I like their game. They're, I think they're good. But yeah, I, don't, I, I don't need a freaking rap. Leave it to Dame Dollar to rap. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> what else is what else we got here? When's the next mega session? Are we having a mega session ever? Wait, uh, wait, wait. I got a better question because we don't know. We have, can't answer that one. What do you do besides dunking? <laughs> Mr. Free Time? Uh, right now, right now, uh, work has been 
very on the down low, so I haven't I haven't been working. I do I do work for a company called Hoop Brothers, which is involved with basketball. I've been with them for a long time. Uh, we make basketball highlight videos. Uh, basically, what we do is we help uh, high school kids, high school basketball players, make it over to the next stage and uh, get on to a, a college team. Um, and uh, I did a lot of stuff for them for many years. So, uh, but right now I'm not doing that. I've been uh, watching a lot of Netflix, resting, and going to the gym. Oh, that you know what? That is half of my day. I go to the gym. I get ready to go to the gym. You gotta eat healthy. So. <laughs> Get your, get your foods right, go to the mm -hmm. gym, come home and just do the entire process of stretching, Epsom salt bath, and foam roll, all that stuff. That takes a lot of time. Yeah. How strict so, is your diet? Uh, it's, okay, so I went I went on vacation uh, two weeks ago. I went to Liverpool for like two and a half weeks, and my diet was terrible there. So I'm, I'm kind of phasing back into having a decent diet just basically not too much sugar and eat healthy it's it's nothing too crazy right i don't think it needs to be that crazy it's because we're dunk like jumping is so taxing it's like you want the healthy food to give you like uh so you don't like put nothing in your body and you can recover and stuff like that but i just think like you don't need to go crazy on like carbs and things because we use so much yeah yeah exactly exactly um i'm not i'm i was never too strict with it um and for the most part, I mean, right now my diet is it's quite normal. It's nothing. There's nothing way too out of the ordinary there. I do eat a lot of chicken. I I prefer to eat chicken. I'm not. A, I don't eat red meats. I hate red meats. Um, chicken and pasta. That's my favorite. So what else have I been doing? Uh, I have a girlfriend now. She's awesome. What? Uh, Just kidding. <laughs> so yeah, that that's been taking up a lot of time, and I've been I've been having fun. I I like I really enjoy her. Uh, How cute! And you know what? You know what? This thing right here, right? That's a Rubik's this, cube for those just listening. He pulled out a yeah, Rubik's cube. Yeah, this this has been my last few days. Uh, <laughs> I've been like trying to learn how to do this really quickly. I've, I've always known how to do it, but I always wanted to do it in like under thirty seconds. So this is what I've been doing for the last. Are few you days. keeping your brain sharp? Yeah, honestly, it's really intuitive. It's very intuitive, and then and then you have to memorize algorithms. So yeah. it, it's fun. <laughs> that is weird. Do yeah, you think? Yeah. Uh, um, do you think that helps in dunking in any way, keeping your brain sharp and focused? No, absolutely not. Okay. You can <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about this hurricane, dude? The j biggest hurricane ever recorded. You've lived in Florida most your whole life, right? Yeah, yeah, we went, I went through the, uh, the one time where we had like four hurricanes at once with Charlie and, yeah. uh, Charlie was pretty bad, so, um, I think by the time it comes and hits us, it's gonna be like a category two or three, so what we're doing, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna stay downstairs and we're all gonna like huddle up in, in our laundry room, cause there's no windows there. Today? I mean like, like this hurricane? Yeah, when it gets bad, when it gets bad, if it gets bad, if it oh. gets that bad. Do I don't that. think it'll get that bad up here because every forecast I look at is getting weaker. Yeah. For like, yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be too bad. It's true, but no, we're not boarding up the windows or anything. Yeah. Uh, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be god awful down south. Yeah. I don't know what Nico or Peter or yeah, the, the down southers. Oh, no. My parents, you mean? Oh yeah. In yeah. My, they're all. They're just boarded up and they're just going to ride it out. It's, I don't think uh, it's going to be so bad. Because okay. the most is just, like, the debris flying around. It's not going to, yeah, like, rip yeah. the house and flooding. So as yeah. long as, like, he, my, my dad boarded up and my mom boarded up to her house. So they just waited out. That's pretty much it. Yeah. It's crazy, we, though, right, that the biggest one and there's, like, another one right behind it? Yeah. I think, and it's going to be long, too, if it's, it's that big. It's literally it's just going to be, like, all day of storming. You know what's big. really funny? I was thinking about this, and I'm glad I remembered. It's, like, <laughs> this is so ridiculous, but I'm, like... I'm not thinking like the hurricane's messing up my life. <laughs> I'm thinking it's the hurricane's messing up dunk life because I had such good plans to like I had this track I, like last weekend I like had such a good beach workout and all I wanted to do was the same thing this week and all I want to do is go outside for like an hour with a football and do work and uh. then come back rest Sunday and Monday and then just take off but now it's like 
now it's, but it's funny too because I'm now I'm just adapting. I'm like, okay, hurricane's coming. Just like if I had like an injury or I didn't get a good sleep, I'm like adapting. I'm adapting the hurricane to dunk life. I'm like, all right, so I might not be able to in the apartment tomorrow. Maybe I could do like the box jumps onto my counter over there or something like that. Just do some kind of plow metrics in the apartment. You know what? I'm with you on that though. What I did for that was uh, today I went to the gym. I hooped. And I've jumped as much as I possibly could. Mm-hmm. So now my body's completely worn up. My I've been doing upper body lifting too, so that's extremely tired. My lower body is really tired. So these next few days I can rest, stretch, nice. yoga, whatever. Woo! And that's good. Yeah. yeah. Hand speed. Good. Hand speed. Oh, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that more. I can exactly. Oh, so awesome. real quick, my building is shutting down the elevators tomorrow to be safe. At five? Okay. So, uh, and then they're going to turn them on when the weather's good, which could be like two days or something. So you're stuck. So I'm stuck. So there's a chance I go to a friend's that's, he goes by Light Flight. (laughs) Wait, is that what you meant by friend before? Yeah. (laughs) Um, All right. Anyway, no, I don't know. I'll let you know. But wait, that leads me to my another question. What's a nickname you go for when you're in a contest? Do you have a nickname you go with? Because you have like Uh, six. I want to try and make everything, uh, everything that has to do with me, it has to all be universal, so it's going to stick with CJ or CJ Champion. That's, that's gotcha. how I'm, that's so, how I'm no, so, like, that's also an extension of that, a Centurion Jumperstein. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, you know, you actually, I, mean, I like that one. I'm going to have to write that one down. That's um, what I would go with. I might be getting a new nick. I am getting. I have a new nickname. To be honest, I've I've been given a new nickname by some greats, and you'll have to wait to find out. Oh that. man, teaser! Yeah, <laughs> yeah let I'll me be, guess. About it, I don't. Know, I probably can talk about it, but that's you know, okay. You could hold it out. I prefer. I prefer waiting. So, are you, are you still uploading the YouTube like dunk sessions or not? Uh, not so long. I see. I had an issue with my computer, and once that happened... What happened like, with that? Uh, my old computer, the hard drive, completely just just fried. Pooped it, itself? Yeah, and I couldn't get it back. And I tried, you know, sending it, and everything, couldn't get it back. So, um, I got my new computer, and... Oh, my computer, uh, my camera also broke. Uh, yeah. I usually put everything on, so... So it's things kind of mixed up, and then I got into a bad habit of not just wanting to upload anything. Right. Everything's been on Instagram. So I haven't been properly doing that in a while, so I don't know when I'll get back to it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, guys. It's okay. I have sessions all lined up, too. I have a bunch of sessions lined up. Well, hopefully you come to one of my... We have a dunk session together so people get to see you. I haven't seen you in person in forever. Holy magoli. Yes, I'll be I'll be ready to. Dude, I hope I fly because it'll be the highest you've ever seen me as well. In addition, I'll, I'll match. I'll match you. Oh my god! Yeah, I'll try to. <laughs> um, so wait, tell the people where you're from because you have a interesting uh, what's it, lineage, whatever okay. you call it. I don't know what the hell you call it. <laughs> it's it's all over the place. Um, but I was born in Canada, so that's why people would say that's where I got my hops. All the people right. hop in Canada. I was born near Toronto. Um, uh, on my dad's side of the family, he is he was born in Trinidad, so he, he's Trinidadian and Indian and some other smaller things. And on my mom's side, she's half Jamaican and half Chinese, plus some other 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 stuff. So and then yeah, put those together, and I'm just like a big mud basically. Mm-hmm. So Very of, interesting. Yeah, I'm an what made you guys come here to Florida? Was it Duncan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they they already knew I was born. They're like, okay, he's got jumpers legs. Yeah, they're like, get him with that kid, Stephen. He's got so much energy, it probably rub off on him. And <laughs> yeah, they secretly planned this out <laughs> years ago. Uh, uh, that's a good question. Was was it work? Maybe my dad's work. I don't know. But we moved to Florida when I was three, so I've been here basically all my life. That's crazy, and it's really crazy that we got to like be next to each other because I met Nico on YouTube a long time ago because we were the one of the few like dunking, and we both were in Florida, and then we met up a few times, and then you came on YouTube, and then we all met once, and then I was like, wait, you live here, and we were like really close to each other, and that was it was so crazy, and Isaiah as well, like he went to UCF, so that was really crazy. 
UCF is the place to be, guys. Oh Come my on. god, UCF is dunk heaven. Yes, it, it is. Uh, it is the paradise of dunking, or Venice Beach. Yeah, but not well, yeah, them. but it's they indoor. Don't have, <laughs> they don't have us. All right. So, what do you what do you think about um, investing in my new uh, gym across dunk gyms across the country? It's called LA Litness. <laughs> and it's a, and it, and we're gonna open up <laughs> dunk gyms across the country. We're doing it. So, how much you want to invest? Are you down? Yes, I'm down. I will invest all my winnings for my next. Hell yeah. No, but for real, I think it would be great if we have like some big cities where there's pros and you're one of them, because then it'll help people. Like you, when you have your sessions, they can come watch and learn a lot. I think that's huge. It would be sick. I mean, that's just like I'll get that going next year. Get those gyms up. You know, I'll build them. Bob the Builder, call him up. <laughs> Please get that going. We will. We will start something revolutionary. It'd be really crazy, right? Oh, by yeah. the way, I saw this court today. An outdoor court with two hoops that looked adjustable, but I don't know if they have uh, like locks on them. But they, which is on the side of the road, two like a full court of like two nice outdoor hoops, like the glass ones. Guys, that is so weird. Always here. scouting. Always scouting. Yeah. <laughs> so that should be the thing. I mean, I got so much free time. I should just be driving around neighborhoods and stuff. I yeah. found this park by me, but it's like the hoops are like double rim. But I want to show you that one. I'm gonna go to it one day and see if it's nice. Because if it's adjustable, that's a game changer. Uh, yeah. It also might be in elementary school, so oh. I'll have to go like after school hours. Yeah. It's fine. Speaking of going to elementary school, we keep saying we should do this, but you were talking about earlier, low rim two-on-two games. Oh, yeah. Do that, and we did do it on one of my YouTube videos, and it was hilarious because we had Hunter. <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> we need to do that. That would be insane, just all like crazy dunkers. What is your tips for... Uh, kids that are trying to get their first dunk jump everybody's gonna tell you the same thing i'm gonna say the same exact thing jump just jump go reach for something jump as many times as possible just jump what does that mean cj all right let's see (laughs) touch the rim yet this is what you're gonna do you're gonna look at the rim you're gonna back up to the three-point line you're gonna you're gonna run up and jump as high as you can and try and touch it and however you did it maybe you would Recognize that you're a one foot or a two foot jumper. Keep at it. Just keep doing. How it do I know which plant to use? Oh, you, you just <laughs> jump first of all. Jump and then whatever felt comfy. Keep mm-hmm. doing. It. That's it. <laughs> if it feels comfy, just keep doing it. And then, oh man, and it's, it's a whole other world too. If, if you have bad footing, I'm trying to think what we could do. I never had bad footing. <laughs> I think for bad footing, because as a person that walks like a duck. Um, <laughs> Bad footing, my tip for bad footing is, like, just do, like, literally straight vert jumps so those feel normal. Then do one, like, a drop step, just one step, and do that as quick as possible till that's, like, quick and explosive, and then add a step, and just gradually from there. That's what I've been doing with my dribble dunks, and it's finally working. That is almost like bounce kit, in a way. Bounce kit is a very step-by-step process. Are you paid to say that? Uh, no, actually not. (laughs) Bounce kid is is what you want to go for. I love that program. Yeah, and Jordan. Yeah, Jordan will be on this podcast soon. He's a busy man. Oh yeah, that's very true. Oh, that that would be a cool podcast. That'd be fun. He's a he's a cool cat. That's that's the one where you get five thousand views easy. Ooh, <laughs> I'm not going for views. I'm going for quality. Good point, good point, good point. Yeah. That's why you have me here. No, right? but it would be helpful with the views so I could do this full time for you guys and love it more and I could do it all the time and then so that's why I need your support. If you I want would, more of this, I need the support. I would show up to your podcast every week. Yeah, we could do it all the time. We should do this again when like, like when, oh, yeah. when an event happens too. Like I don't need like a contest we'll talk. I don't even know. When we land a new dunk, I don't even know. We just keep going. Or if we just have an idea or something. That's what about. I like too is like new ideas and things for the dunk world. Alright, well I'm going to hit you up when I got ideas then. Alright, is that the end of this? this? This could be. It was a pretty long one, right? I think so. I don't even know. I'm, I'll check after. But anyway, I guess I'll see you soon. And you are CJ underscore champion. Nailed it. And uh... Not Centurion Jumperstein. That's another dunker. Don't get him confused. That's his alter ego. Uh, what should we look out for? Dunk League? Um, 
week is going to be great. Sometime in October. Oh, yeah, and then October 1st, uh, be looking out for the FIBA 3x3 in Mexico. Mm-hmm. And uh, leave some comments and rate it if you think CJ was fantastic. Let yeah, us because- let us know because <laughs> this was just one giant practice for his interviews for his next contest. So it was. <laughs> All right, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'll yeah, talk I mean, to you soon. Be- huh? You cut out for a sec. Ah, oh, it's okay. It's all good. All right. Well, be safe in the hurricane. Yes, you too. You too, and I hope to be back. Uh, I love the whole dunk community. I love you guys, dunk life. We love you. Talk to you guys back. Watch your head, boy. Yeah, you too. I'm not even close. Bye. <laughs> You're gonna get... Okay. All right. Bye. All right.